I thought it was on. Sorry. Praise God, say to the Most High. We give God glory and honor and praise and thanksgiving for all that he's done and mm -hmm. all that he's about to do. We bless, amen, amen. you tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, we, we encourage uh, you hoping that, amen, everything is going well, mm -hmm. no matter what you're experiencing in your life today. Know that God is with you and that we walk by faith and not by, not sight. by sight. And we're going to talk about that. Thank God for my precious daughter, Dr. That's Sarah. Amen. <laughs> and we're going to talk about our topic um, is the straight gate, the way of faith. Amen. The straight Amen. gate, the way of faith. So Amen. let's go to the throne, have your Bibles, and hopefully you have your your marker. Amen. Amen. So that we can, Amen. yes. <laughs> Sarah, won't you pull me more? Uh, so we thank God for that. And we're going to trust that tonight you'll hear mm -hmm. something that will edify you and Amen. encourage you Amen. and build you up. Our Agape Love family, thank God for you. Mm -hmm. Our Agape Love alumni, saints mm -hmm. and friends, mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're encouraged. Amen. There's a lot going on in the world Amen. Um, every day. And it doesn't mean that God doesn't have it. God is still in control. Some people might say, well, no, I don't believe that. Well, whether you believe it or not. Mm -hmm. Amen. God is the sovereign Lord, the mm -hmm. omniscient, mm -hmm. omnipresent, omnipotent God. All right. And he, there's not a there's not a sparrow that falls to the earth. Amen. That God don't see. Amen. Is that right? That's certainly so, true. <laughs> so let's go to the let's go to the throne of grace. All right. Amen. Almighty and eternal God, we come before you. Yes, Lord. In the righteous and mighty name of Jesus. You are the Christ of the living God. And Lord, we give you glory and honor Hallelujah. and praise and thanksgiving. Hallelujah. I pray that you bless every man, woman, boy, and girl yes, that God. is joining us tonight. Mm -hmm. I pray, Holy Spirit, that, amen, you'll have plenty room to mm -hmm. move in yes, our Lord. life, yes, Lord. in our heart, yes, Lord. in our thoughts, Thank you, in Lord. our ways. Mm -hmm. Lord God, we submit ourselves unto you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Jesus, you are the lifter upper of our head. Yes, Lord. And we pray that the will of God will be done mm -hmm. in every way and in every area of our life. Yes, Lord. I pray for grandparents and Great grandparents and spouses, mm -hmm. continue to touch and strengthen them and encourage them, Lord God. Them, oh God. Help us to hold on to your unchanging hand. Yes, Father. You said your word. Yes, help us to hold on to you, Lord God, because you, you God. definitely have us. Yes, Father. You promised you'd never leave us nor forsake no, us. You said you'll be with us always, even to the, even end, to the end of the age. Of the age. And so, Holy Spirit, we submit to your Lordship. Mm -hmm. Lead us and guide us, direct us. Think through our thoughts and speak through our lips of clay. Let the ears of your people be open to hear, to receive, yes, yes, to Lord. acknowledge you in all of their ways. Thank you, God. And Lord, you said you would direct our path. Yes, Father. So to God be glory and honor. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Jesus mighty name. And all of God's people said amen. amen. Come on, let's Shabbat the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We Shabbat the Lord. Wonderful. And we Jesus. praise you. We thank you for your Hallelujah. loving kindness Jesus. and all that you do for us. Okay, so we're going to. Start in the book of St. Luke. Okay. 13th chapter. Sorry. In the gospel. <laughs> I read that this morning. Amen. The gospel of St. Luke. 2021. I think. Yes. Mm -hmm. the, the, the 13th. Amen. amen. Luke, the uh, anointed doctor. All right. Amen. 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 Luke, the 13th mm -hmm. chapter. And again, saints, our topic tonight is mm -hmm. the straight gate, the way of faith. Mm -hmm. Now, let me just uh, kind of lay a foundation. Mm -hmm. Before we go into this, can you believe that the time that we're living in, we're being more challenged to what it means to be saved, to be a Christian, uh, to walk by faith and not by sight, as mm -hmm. Second Corinthians 5 and 7 tells us, mm -hmm. to live a life that acknowledges God in all of our ways. As he said, trust in the Lord with all thine heart, lean not to thine own understanding, yes, and in all thy ways acknowledge him. And he shall direct your path. Yeah. Well, I submit to you the challenge to be a Christian, to be born again, to be Holy Ghost filled mm -hmm. is going to be more and more mm -hmm. and more a challenge. Mm -hmm. But Jesus gave us a heads up okay. in the word. Right, 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 right. So St. Luke 13 and Dr. Okay. Knox, mm -hmm. I would like you to start reading at the, yes, 22nd verse okay. through 30. All right, second reads, and he went through the cities and villages, teaching and journeying toward Jerusalem. Yes. Then one said to him, Lord, are there few who are saved? And he said to them, strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many, I say to you, will seek to enter and will not be able. When once the master of the house 
has risen up and shut the door and you begin to stand outside and knock at the door saying, Lord, Lord, open for us. And he will answer and say to you, I do not know you where you are from. Then you will begin to say, we ate and drank in your presence and you taught in our streets. But he will say, I tell you, I do not know you where you are from. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. Okay, so I want you to read the uh, 27. 23rd verse again because, of course, Jesus is, is going for expounding the word of God, uh, sharing the gospel, mm -hmm. and there are people that are listening. Mm -hmm. He's teaching mm -hmm. in the cities and the villages, journeying to, on his journey toward Jerusalem. But this is a this is something that a lot of times, if we're not careful, we can rush over it. Mm -hmm. I want you to read that 23rd verse again, because I want us to take a deeper look, a deeper insight into okay. it. New King James Version reads, uh, Then one said to him, Lord, are there few mm -hmm. who are saved? Uh -huh. And he said to them, strive. the 24th verse, strive to enter through the narrow gate. So it's a narrow gate. For many, I say to you, will seek to enter and will not be able. So here, the Lord, as we just kind of, uh, we, we want to make sure that we take our time and unload this because this is so, Hold on for me. Hey, this Hold is on. so interesting. I got a meeting. I got to go. How? About to say, please, I got a meeting. Oh. I got to go back. Okay. Okay. Um, well, I'll go on with it. You're going to go on? Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. You know how to turn it off? You just pr you just move the mouse and turn on that red button. Okay. I think I gotta think, forgive me, thanks. I gotta go back to work. <laughs> okay. She has to yeah, she uh, gotta report has for to move for yeah. Uh, Station identification. Yeah, yeah. So here Jesus is expounding mm -hmm. to them to strive to enter in. Mm -hmm. They're asking the question, then said one of them unto him to the Lord, Are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, Strive. Strive. In other words, it's going to be very important for us, amen, to be focused mm -hmm. on the gospel. And, you know, we're living in a time of uh, philosophical uh, ideology all over the place, whether it's existentialism, uh, whether it's the New Age, whether it's uh, global, whether it's evolution. Uh, there are so many things that are coming to, to bear yeah. on, amen, it's, they're coming to bear on our culture. Now, the, what I'm saying on our culture there's never been a time that I remember in history that so many of us, amen, are challenged to stay focused on not only the word of God, but the will of God. There is, uh, people are being pulled every which way, uh, you know, wh whether it's through technology, whether it's through social media, whether it's uh, with association, no matter what is going on in our world, it seems as though that the church of Jesus Christ is being challenged like never before. And so I really believe that we're getting a preview, amen, a heads up, which is what is coming. Because remember, this was written 2,000 years ago. Strive to enter in. Now, if Jesus uh, was expounding this to over 2,000 years ago, and we're living in a time now like Daniel said, knowledge shall increase, people will run to and fro. We're seeing knowledge increase, especially in terms of AI, in terms of uh, the internet, and the uh, information highway exponentially. Amen. There is knowledge being uh, tripled and quadrupled, and you know, every day. Every day there's something new, there's something going on, there's something that is adding to the ability to distract us from our kingdom assignments, our relationship with Jesus Christ, our fellowship with the saints, amen, even your prayer life, amen, there are, there is a challenge concerning your prayer life, concerning your time in the word of God, concerning all that God has called you to do, and so Jesus said there's a striving, amen, strive, in other words, make your mind up that you're going to strive to enter in at the straight gate. Now, remember, and we're going to talk about the straight gate, what it is, amen, and, and why it's so important for us to do just what the Lord has 
giving them, those who are listening and those who are standing, amen, in the earshot of Christ, amen. He tells them at the 24th verse, strive to enter in at the straight gate. Remember, there's a time coming that the Bible said the kingdom of God will suffer violence and it's a violence that take it by force. Amen. So there's, there's a warfare. Uh, there is a challenge, amen, for, for you to just even stay focused on the things of God. It says for many, now remember, remember when he says many, that means uh, it could be thousands and millions today because the, the world has 8 million people in it right now or, or such, you know, around that time. Around that amount. He said, I say unto you, they'll seek to enter in and shall not be able. I wonder why. H have you considered that, that Jesus said, there are many that I, I say unto you will seek to enter in and shall not be able. Is it because of religion? Well, Lord, long as I'm, a, I'm, I'm, a, uh, I'm faithful to my denomination. Um, there is a difference between religion and relationship. But look what he says. He said, I will say unto you, they will seek to enter in and shall not be able. Why will they not be able? I submit to you because there's only one way. Jesus said, I am, what does it say, John 14 and 6 said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And so let's go on. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit more about what that straight gate, what does it personify? What does it really mean to the believer? What does it really say to the body of Christ and the church at hand? Amen. So he said they will not be able. Well, why? Why would Jesus say they will not be entered? So could it be, and let's look at the 25th verse. When once the master of the house is risen up, shut and have shut to the door, and you begin to stand without and to knock. Look what it said. And you begin to knock. Does this sound a little bit like the a five wise and the five foolish, the, the five that were not ready. Amen. He said that there will be some that are going to be knocking. Amen. At the door saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. Well, isn't that what the five foolish, uh, uh, they, they, they were knocking. They were five. They were virgins. They were religious. They were in the church, obviously. And they're knocking, but they took no oil for their lamps. Amen. They didn't trim their lamps. They did not keep them burning. And so they're knocking, and it says, Lord, Lord, open unto us, and he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not where you are. Where do you come from? Do you have a real relationship? Is your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Have you decided, I'm going to follow Jesus? And, and make sure you bring your family with you. But look what it said, I know you not where you are. In other words, where are you coming from? Who are you? There was no intimate relationship between those who were knocking, amen, and those who had closed the door. The Lord closed the door because remember, saints uh, and friends, there's going to be a time when, amen, the grace is going to be, amen, it's going to be over. When the Lord say, hey, enough is enough. When that last person gets saved. When that believer, that last believer, and we don't know the day nor the hour. We don't even know the day or the hour of the rapture. Jesus said only his father in heaven knows. And so, but the time is near. And he said, amen, we can redeem the time. We have to be wise and redeem the time. But look what it said, and he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not. Where are you? And I'm going to ask you right now, where are you in your life today? Where are you in your relationship? If the Lord would come tonight, are you confident that, amen, you would be, if he says, come on up, come hither, will you hear the voice of our Lord? Now, you might say, well, I've been keeping the hearing. And I think that the reason why the, that we keep hearing it is so we can rehearse it and rehearse it and rehearse it and rehearse it and get ready, get ready, get ready for it because his coming is near. His redemption is closer than when we first believed the word of God said. Amen? He said, look at Israel, the fig tree. When you see, amen, it begin to bud. Know that the summer, we know that if we see the fig tree about the bud, we know that the uh, summer is near. Well, we can see that we're in the last days. Every uh, All we have to do 
you don't have to pick up a newspaper these days. You, you, it's obvious in your local communities and neighborhoods. We're seeing lawlessness. We're seeing inclement weather, anomalies, amen. We're seeing, uh, even uh, as my daughter was preaching on Sunday, uh, cricket manifestations. Uh, these things we don't take for, what well, they call it global um, warming or whatever. We're seeing all these things that Jesus said would participate, amen, so typically I should say, the coming of the Lord, that the rapture is close. So there's some things that are coming that will precede the coming of the Lord. And he gave us those answers in Matthew, the 24th chapter. And as always, I encourage you to do your own personal prophetic eschatological, which is simply the study of last days, amen, with your, with your, for yourself and your family. Or start a Bible group in your home. But let people know that what you're seeing is a reality. Amen. It's a reality. The Lord is on his way back. Well, the 26th verse says, then shall ye begin to say, they shall begin to say. Now, that word begin means that something is up. And they're, they're trying to look for a response, and they're not getting the response they want. And I, and I believe a lot of that is because of the philosophy of the day, whether it's New Age, uh, human secularism, um, you know, a global thinking on, on a global scale, uh, whether you believe in the evolutional thoughts, uh, ideologies of Darwin and so many educators. There are people that are, that'll begin to say, wait, wait a minute, let me take another look at this. Things are changing. And they will begin to say, we have eaten and drunk in thy presence, and thou hast taught us in our street. Uh, I, I want to submit to you, the gospel is being taught everywhere. Uh, we don't have an excuse for not hearing the gospel. For this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached unto all the world, and then shall the end come. That's what Jesus said in Matthew 24. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached unto all the world, and then shall the end come. So now let's take a look. They, then they shall begin to say, we've eaten, we've drunk in thy presence, thou hast taught us in our streets, but ye shall say, but he shall say rather, talking about our Lord, I'll tell you, I know you not. Amen. I know you not. Where are you from? Depart from me. Uh, wh whence you are. In other words, who are you? Wh what, what is your relationship that you have with me? You know, when the Lord said, you know, from their, uh, many of them worship with their mouth, but their hearts are far from me. But what's from the heart reaches the heart. So if you have a relationship with the Lord, he knows you. Amen. And remember what Jesus said, my father and I are one. And he said, but father, make them one as we are one in St. John, the 17th chapter. So the Lord, amen. And your name, if you've been born again, is written in the Lamb's book of life. It's been documented you gave your life to the Lord. But if you, amen, keep resisting and you just want to follow a religious path and not a relationship path. Let me say it again. Some people just want to follow a, re a religious path. Well, I'm going to church on Sunday, uh, Thursday night Bible study. Amen. I'm going to sing in the choir. And you did all these works. But Jesus said that we're not saved by any works of righteousness that we could do. Amen. He wants a living relationship with you. Amen. Now, the 28th verse said, there shall be, now, let, let me just finish 27. Okay, because I don't want to forget any of this. He says, so I know you not where you're from. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. I, I submit to you that when Christ is expounding this word, um, there are those that were in the crowd that were still practicing secret sin. That's what iniquity is. So you can't put on a face in front of the saints and then you go your own way and do your own thing. Amen. I remember back in the 60s, there was a song. I think it was the 60s. Uh, it's your thing. Do what you want to do. I, I can't tell you who the, I think the word was socket to, whatever. The 60s or the 70s. I know it had to be the least, the least the late 60s if it was the 60s at all. But nevertheless, that philosophy in terms of uh, have it your way, do your own thing. Uh, you know, that philosophy has been around for some years now. But I submit to you, there is a greater manifestation of human secularism 
on that is affecting the church. And, and, and I want to talk about that because it's one thing for the church, amen, to start becoming lukewarm. Remember what Jesus told the churches? that uh, One of the churches in Asia, he said, when you're lukewarm, I think it was a church of Laodicea, Laodicea, he said, I'll spit you out. I'll spit you out of my mouth. He would have rather have you hot or cold. So what is the benefit in staying, amen, where God can use you and where you can enter into that straight gate? First of all, the, first of all, it's called the highway of holiness. Isaiah talks about that way. There's a way that shall be there. And it's called the highway of holiness. And said, you know, even the welfare man cannot enter in. Amen. In other words, it's for those who are called, amen, not only to the Lamb Supper of the, of the Lord, but remember, it's for those who heed the calling, who have surrendered to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, who have committed their way. Because remember what Jesus said, I am the way, I'm the truth, and the life. So the Lord leaves us a path, pathway. I want you to go with me now to the book of some Psalms. We're going to read some Psalms. Uh, Psalm 16 and 11. Let's go there first. Psalm 16 and 11. Now, the culture is changing so rapidly that to maintain a godly spiritual relationship, walking in righteousness, you have to outlast the devil. Be intentional, determined to stand and keep standing. But in Psalm 16 and 11, the 11th verse, he makes it plain that God has a place for us and a way for us to stay so that we won't get lost on this journey of life because there's so much going on. But look what it says here in Psalms 16 and 11. Thou will show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. And at thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. So when Jesus says he is the way, the truth, and the life, he has prepared a pathway for us. And here David writes, thou will show me. So the Lord will make plain the way that we should go. Thou will show me the path of life, and in thy presence is fullness of joy. There's pleasures forevermore. And so in his presence, so we, how do we stay in the presence of the Lord? I submit first thing, God inhabits what? The praises of his people. Say that with me. God inhabits my praise. Hallelujah. Say it again. God has inhabited my praise. Because God, amen, is he's magnified in your hallelujahs, your glory to God's, your thank you, Jesus. Amen. Your praise, amen, uh, comes before God and he inhabits the praises of his people. So His pre in his presence is fullness of joy. And in his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Amen. That's keeping you in the path of life. Another thing, let's go to Psalms 27 and 1. I don't know about you, but I am more determined than ever before to stay before God. God looks on us. He watches over us. He that keeps Israel will neither slumber or sleep. So Psalm 27 and 1 says, the Lord is my light. And remember, there's no darkness in Jesus at all. He said, I am the light of the world, and you are light, those of who are called by him in the world. And there's a reason why the light of Christ is in you. Because once you've been born again, the darkness has passed away, and God inhabits, the Holy Spirit inhabits you. And in him, there is no darkness at all. There's no shadow of turning. So the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And so here, again, David is admonishing and encouraging the people of Israel that the Lord is my light. So to walk a pathway, you need light. Is that right? To walk in a pathway where you don't stumble, where you don't fall. Now unto him was able to what? Keep you from falling. Able to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. So the only God, our Savior, be glory and dominion and majesty for him forever. Amen. I, he Listen, he is worthy to be praised. He receives the glory, the honor, the praises. Amen. All of that he deserves. Well, he also says, arise and shine for thy light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. And, uh, and that's in uh, uh, Isaiah, the 60th chapter. Arise and shine. 
So how do I stay before him? I have to arise. I have to take my stand. And after I've done all the stand, I keep standing. But arise and shine. Let your light so shine before men that they see your good work and give glory to your Father, which is in heaven. Let's go to Psalms 32 and 8. Hallelujah. Psalms 32 and 8. And it says, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way. There it is again. In the way which thou shalt go, I will guide thee with mine eye. And be not as the horse or as the mule which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with bit and bridle, lest they come near unto you. They won't come to you unless you uh, put a bridle and, and have to control them by uh, a harness. Well, God wants us to have a free spirit. For where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. He wants you to be willing to follow him. Jesus said, pick up your cross and follow me. Is that right? And so in this world that's pulling, trying to pull the church apart, families apart, marriages apart, uh, divine associations apart, it's affecting a, a lot of areas of life. There are people who are broken up over politics, families who have been divided because of politics. There have been people who have lost homes because of politics. Then you get into another situation where, you know, where you're deciding how far are we going to go with the social media platforms. I'm not saying there's no place for them, but seek ye what? First, the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and all these other things shall be added. So God doesn't want us to be lost. Jesus said he is the way, the truth, and the life. So, amen. Let's continue. Let's go to Proverbs 4 and 18. Amen. So in this Bible study, I, I want you to really make notes, amen. I really hope that you got your, your highlighter because, listen, we are living in a time now. If you don't stay attentive to what Christ has warned us of and told us to do and watch what to, watch what to do, amen, it'll be easy for you to be like a ship without a sail. A ship without a sail has no, doesn't navigate well, does it? It has no destination. It has no port of entry. And Jesus said, enter into the straight gate. So there is a port, an entry, and our destination is heaven. Amen? Our destination is heaven. Proverbs 4. Let's go there. And let's take a look also of what, how God has planned a pathway, a straight gate, which is the way of faith. Amen. We walk by faith and not by sight. The just shall live by their faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The elders that walked in faith received a good report. Amen. We want to make sure that we are in agreement with God, agreement with Christ. Amen. We want to say the same thing that he said so that we can get the results that we believe in God for. Well, Proverbs 4 and 18 says, but the path of the just. Is that word path? Straight gate. Look what it says here. The path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. In other words, there is something that God desires for you to reach your destination. So the path of the just shines more and more unto the perfect day. Well, what does that mean? Coming into uh, manifestation, the plan of God, that God will help you to navigate the trials, the tests, the situations, the tribulation, your ups, your downs, your valleys, your high points, whatever you experience on your life journey. Amen. The path of the just, amen, is as a shining light, shining more and more unto the perfect day, that, that day of, of fullness, of fruition of the plan, purpose, and will of God concerning your life. Um, you know, when I read on down, and I think we should read on down for the content's sake, but he says, the way of the wicked, amen, is of darkness. So we see a distinguishing uh, difference between light and, 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 and dark, day and night. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. And that's why it's so essential for us to mark the perfect man. Behold the upright. The end of that, that man is peace. 
and the Lord would have us to walk in peace, not in chaos, not in division, not in confusion, and all of these other things that the enemy will try to trap you and trip you up. Amen. But he said, the way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. Amen. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. So hearing the word of God, give us this day our what? Daily bread and lead us not into what? Temptation, but do what? Deliver us from evil. So the Lord has a way. His word is divine instruction. Remember we read that earlier, that God will instruct us in the way and teach us in the way that we should go. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Godhead, the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. He will lead and guide us into all truth. Jesus said he will teach us in the way that we should go. He will speak those things that the Father has said, that he has said. Amen. And so we want to be mindful of studying the word of God. How do we stay on the straight and narrow way? How do we go into the gate, which, to the, which is the way of faith? Well, look what it says here. Amen. So my, so my son, attend to my words and climb that ear into my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. Amen. For they are life unto those that find them. Look what it says. They are life. Remember Jesus said in St. John, uh, I believe it was the sixth chapter, about eating of his flesh and drinking his blood. Amen. His flesh is meat indeed and his uh, blood is drink indeed. And he said, the words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So look what, and, and you know what? What will produce life? See, words are like seeds, containers of power. They produce after their own kind. Is that right? So look what he says here. Amen. Let them not depart from thine ears, their eyes rather. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. Well, what did Jesus say? Out of the issues of the heart, the mouth speaks proceeds, you know, the power of death and life is in the tongue. If I fill my ears and hear the word of God, amen, and words are like seeds, they're going to produce after their own kind. Now, remember in Romans 10, he said, if I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus, I shall be saved. So when we believe and hear, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, guess what's going to happen? Your heart will begin to expand and fill with the word of God and before you know it, there's a reservoir. There's a reservoir that wells up. And remember what he said, like Jesus said in St. John 3, I mean 7 rather, if uh, you believe in me, as the scripture has said, out of your belly, amen, John 7, 37, show what? Flow rivers of living water. So the word of God will be like a, a river inside you. Amen. Words that flow right out of your heart. Because what, and what's from the heart reaches the heart. If you want to minister to your loved ones, give them the word from your heart. Amen. And remember, out of the issues of the heart, the mouth speak. So fill it full with the word of God, and you'll see life. Amen. People will sense the life that's in you. We're living epistles, saints, written and read of all men. Some of you, the only Bible folks going to read is you. So make sure that they read you right. Amen. What am I talking about? Read you right. Amen. Allowing God's word to have full precedent. As a matter of fact, make it the, I always say the word of God is the final authority over my life. So whether it's a doctor's report, whether it's financial um, challenges that come up, um, when it comes to my relationships with my loved ones, my family, my church family, saints and friends, I want to make sure, and even our community, because we should represent the kingdom. God has a kingdom agenda a divine purpose for us, and we're here. He didn't take us home when we first got saved because you have something that God wants you. You have gold nuggets, and some of you know what I'm talking about, in you that God wants to bring out so others can see your good work and give the Father the glory in heaven. You have a good thing in you. Somebody say, I have a good thing in me. Come on, put your hand on your heart and say, I have a good thing in me. You're a treasure chest, amen, of value for the kingdom of God. And in your family, you have value. We have this treasure and earth and vessels that the excellency of the power might be of God and not of man, 2 Corinthians, the fourth, uh, the fourth chapter tells us. Now, let's go on. So let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine ears, or heart rather. And, and I thought about, you know, when we think about the straight gate, 
and keeping our eyes. We have an eye gate. Come on. We have an eye gate. Is that right? Your, your eyes are the gates. As a matter of fact, some people simply call the eyes the windows of the soul. And Jesus talked about if the light of the eye be dark, how full is the darkness. So he wants the light of God to shine forth out of your eyes so that you can see. Blessed of those who can see. Because he said that some said they can see their sin remain them. Jesus rebuked some of the Pharisees because they said that they saw. But if they could admit that they were blind, God then would open their eyes. Amen. So it's important that we keep uh, the word of God before our eyes. Amen. Um, many of the Jewish children would have that thing on it. The, well, the men too, I guess, would have that thing. Uh, I can't remember what it's called. But it would, it would be like a, a sign uh, that they were not only sanctified, set apart, but the word of God. Amen. The Torah was always before their eyes. Amen. The Torah was always before their eyes. And we need to keep the word of God before our eyes. Amen. So let's go on. Um, let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life. Amen. Unto those that find them and help to all their flesh. And, and I learned this uh, not only in a biblical way, but in a, a physical way to keep the word of God before me. And somebody might say, well, Dr. Dixon, you still have to take medication. Well, listen, the word of God, we just read it, is medicine. I confess you can have whatsoever you say. Now, in 1 John, the fifth chapter, it says that, I'm going to read it. Um, I don't have my Amplified, but uh, I, I have a Hebrew Bible, but I'm, I don't have it right in front of me. I got all these Bibles in front of me, but I don't have that one in front of me today. But I want you to run over there with me too. Let's go to 1 John, the fifth chapter, and look what he says here. So that you'll have it fresh in your mind and in your ear. 14 verse. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have desired of him. So what does he say? Remember, Jesus said, ask and shall be given, seek you shall find, knock and the door shall be opened. And so here John, the beloved, saying, if we know he hears us, Whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. Because remember, Jesus made it very plain. Ask, if you ask anything, ask my father anything in my name, he will do it, that your joy might be full. And the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen? Well, let's keep on going. So it said, keep thine heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a forward mouth and perverse lips put far from thee. So we want to speak the things that become sound doctrine. We don't want to use our words that will cause condemnation, confusion. Amen. God wants us to speak the things that become sound doctrine. The things that edify. Amen. The things that edify the hearers thereof. That's what Ephesians said. We want to speak the things that have life. Amen. Not cursing, but words of life. Amen. The sound doctrine that even a child, amen, can understand. Now, then he says here, the 25th verse, let thine eyes look right on. Again, focusing on, the, on your sight, your spiritual sense of being able to see. Vision, amen, is very important to the believer. And I submit to you in the time that we're living in, you need to make sure that you have a godly vision. A vision for your family, your marriage, your children, your ministry, your business, uh, your relationships, whatever you're doing. Amen. Ask God to give you discernment and vision. Amen. Vision is seeing beyond what the eyes cannot see. Vision goes beyond the natural 2020 or 2040 or whatever your eye, your, your eyesight is. It goes beyond that because vision comes from the inside out. Amen. To have a vision. Without a vision, the people perish. That's what the word of God says. Okay. So let your eyes look right on and thine eye looks look straight before thee. Straight. Is that what we're talking about? Amen. The straight gate, the way of faith. We want to enter into the straight gate. That's what Jesus said. Amen. Well, we got to see where we're going and know where we're going. 
Amen. So that, amen, people will understand without a shadow of doubt that God has a plan and a purpose, a guide, a direction, a destiny for your life. And that's the, listen, you're going to live with the Lord forever because God is an eternal. He is the eternal. He is the God omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent, El Elyon, the Most High God, the El Shaddai, Jehovah Shema. He wants to, and he loves you enough to give you his shalom, his peace. So let's go on. And then it says, ponder the path of thy feet. And remember, we're talking about the pathway. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Truth, amen, will help you stay the path. Amen. The life, God wants you to live a life, and he'll light your pathway. Is that right? He will light your heart. He will light your pathway. He will light your way. I don't want to walk in darkness. The Bible makes it very plain that the harvest is plenty, but the labors are few. And pray that the Lord of harvest, that he'll send forth labors. Why? Because it's getting dark, y'all. Amen. And we don't have a lot of time left. So with the time that we have left, amen, God wants to light our pathway. So that we don't stumble, we don't fall, we don't get off track, we don't get lost on the journey. We don't get pulled in or sucked into the uh, the world system. Because what did John say? Uh, all that's in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes. Amen. That's right. And the lust of the, the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. We want to make sure that we don't get caught up. Amen. And I know we're a visual people, a visual creature, especially men are. But women are too. We get caught up in what we see, fashions and all that. But remember, the Bible tells Paul said, my, uh, my brethren, I beseech you by the mercies of God that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is just reasonable service, and be not what? Conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you might prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Don't let the world, the, the, the philosophies of the world, the ideologies of this world, amen, the mindset of the world change you, amen. Uh, don't let the green grass fool you is another way. <laughs> Amen. It might look good. It might look good on the other side, but you don't know what you're going to run into because there's nothing in the world that leads to eternal life. Amen. You got to come out from among them. Be separate, saith the Lord. Touch not, taste not, handle not the unclean thing. I might sound old fashioned. I'm sorry. I'm not apologizing, but the word of God. Amen. God watches over and let God be true and every man a liar. It's still holiness is still the right way to walk to go, to live your life. Amen. Paul dealt with those philosophers. I talked about it last week in Asia Minor. But the truth is the truth, and the truth is going to keep on marching on. We know we're getting ready to celebrate uh, the 4th of July. Amen. Uh, 4th of July, 1776, when we became an officially documented nation, separated from Great Britain, England. But what about, okay, and the forces of their authority, well, what about when we come out from among them, be separate, saith the Lord? Amen. We're, we're no longer under the bondage of, of sin and uh, under the de uh, degradation of uh, the plots and snares of hell. Those demonic plots. You have the Holy Spirit dwelling on the inside. Walk in the light that God has given you, and God will give you even more light. So it says, ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand, nor the left, and remove thy feet from evil. Amen. Ponder the path of your feet. So Jesus said he's the way, the truth. Well, ponder that. Should I go or should I not go? Should I do this or should I not do this? What choices are you making that are in league with the biblical principles and values of the gospel of Jesus Christ? If you get pulled away, amen, sometimes you, there are people that got pulled away for money and for position, uh, for power. Amen. And they haven't made their way back. But remember, Jesus said, strive to enter in. I said to you, amen, to strive to enter in at the gate, gate, the straight gate. Amen. Let's go back there to Luke 13 and 24. He says, strive to enter in at. There's an entry port. There's a port. Entry port. An entry point. Amen. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. Why? They got off pass. They got off point. They, uh, they got off track, however you want to say it. But God still loves us and wants us to get back on track. He can put you back on track. 
Thank God for that. Let's go to Psalms 119 and 133. Psalms 119 and 133. It's so important. There's a warfare for your soul. There's a fight for your mind. Amen. Your affections. Who are you going to serve? What did, what did Joshua say? Moses also. Choose thee this day who you going to serve. So in Psalms 119, 105, the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The word of God is that, again, light in your pathway. Walk in the light as he's a light, and God will even give you more light. So walk in the path of light. Amen. The word, the word, the word is the lamp, the light. Amen. That we are to walk in. Ponder the path of our feet. Make sure the word that is that it, it, it'll light your pathway. Amen. It'll lead you and guide you. Amen. When you walk, you walk the walk by the by the word of God. You're not going to stumble, and you won't fall. I'm gonna say it again. You won't stumble, and you won't fall if you walk in the light. So that was Psalms 119 and 105. Let's go to Psalms 119 and 100. Amen. I want to make sure that I have that right for you. Okay. So, Psalms 119 and 133, 133rd verse. Yes, it's 133rd verse. Order, look what it says, order my steps in thy word, and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Look what it says, order my steps. Reminds me of Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean into thine own, lean not to thine own understanding, and in all thy ways, what? Acknowledge him, and he shall, what? Direct your path. Now, the other scripture said he will instruct your way. So, order, God will order your steps. If you acknowledge him, if you trust him, because sometimes you can't even trust your own flesh. There's temptations all around us. But God lets us know that even when the temptations come, he is faithful. And just to make a way for you to escape that you might be able to bear it. So order. I want to, I, I don't know about you, but I want to, I don't want to get out of order. I want to live my life that brings, amen, not only peace to the, my loved ones, but I know people look for integrity today. They want to know, are you really real? Amen. If the words that, amen, that you speak, if they have life, if you're repeating the gospel, is it from your heart or just as another book that you just read? Is it a reality in your life? So David here says, order, amen, my steps in thy word and let not any iniquity, not any iniquity. And David knew a little bit about iniquity, but I believe that he had learned his lesson well. And don't let any iniquity, no, no matter what it is, amen, which is secret sin, have dominion over me. God gave us the ability to take authority over every demonic uh, force that comes against us. He even gave us the ability to tread upon serpents. Is that right? So we want to make sure that we walk in such a way that God will be glorified. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Amen. So we are entering in at the straight gate. Um, I have another scripture that I want to share before we get ready to close. Let's go to um, 2 Corinthians and the fourth chapter. Praise God. And then we got one more scripture and we'll close for tonight. But I just want you to get this like you never got it before. So 2 Corinthians 4 chapter, first verse. Therefore, seeing we have ministry. We have this ministry. Y'all have your ministries. Yes, you're connected to a church, to a pastor. You may not be a pastor, but somewhere you are called, amen, a vessel for God's glory. You are called to be a witness. You are called to serve, amen. Therefore, see, we have this ministry. As we have received mercy, we faint not. But we renounce. How much stand before God's presence and stay before the Lord? We renounce the hidden things of dishonesty. Not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth. Remember, we talked about the truth. Committing ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Because if our gospel, amen, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to those who are lost, in whom the God of this world have blinded the minds 
of them that believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Amen. So God wants them to see the light of the gospel. He wants their eyes to open. Amen. You have an assignment to help them. Amen. Every one of our loved ones, everyone that God assigns to your life, and even some who may have backslidden, but they need to get back connected in fellowship. Amen. With the Father and the Son. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light, there it is again, to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts. Remember I said what's from the heart reaches the heart. Let that light, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Look what it says here. To the give, to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of of Jesus Christ, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the ecstasy of the power may be of God and not of us. So God wants the light, your light to shine so that you can point the way to a straight gate and that people will find it by the way of faith and they'll enter in, but they have to strive. There is a strive. And somebody might say, well, you know, now that we walk by faith and it's by grace, but I say, well, amen. When Jesus said strive, he means that you're going to have some competition. Faith, even faith will have a competition. Amen. Well, you know, because remember, the, the, uh, we have to believe that God can do what he said he could do. He said, behold, I'm the Lord. I'm the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me or too difficult? So let's close in Romans, the 12th chapter. Amen. And I trust, saints, that you're getting some out of this. So I pray that. Amen, that you'll share, share this message. Because again, we're living at a time now that people are really being challenged in their biblical principles, uh, their willingness and their commitment to follow Christ. They're being pulled. Uh, there's all kinds of um, demonic attractions, uh, worldly endeavors. And I'm not saying that God doesn't give us freely everything to enjoy in this life. But we gotta make sure, seek ye what? First the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and all these other things shall do what? Amen. There is something about keeping God first. He'll give you what your heart. As a matter of fact, he said, uh, when your ways please the Lord, he'll even cause your enemies to be at, uh, be at peace. Amen. And he will give you desires of your heart. But seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these other things shall be what? Added. So Paul uh, speaks to the, uh, the, the saints at Rome. And he said, I beseech you. And remember, let me just say this. Rome, of course, was all roads led to Rome. So there's nothing going on in Wisconsin, Las Vegas, California, New York, Alabama, Atlanta, uh, Memphis, uh, Arizona, any place. All roads led to Rome. There, was, there were things going on. There was competition for other gods, uh, uh, along with uh, Paul wanted to talk to them about making sure they stay faithful to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the true God, Jehovah, amen, the El Shaddai, the God, amen, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And, it was, and he would let them know that there was going to be the temptation to conform. So he said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you, first of all, stay before him, present your bodies. Amen. I give him my, I give him my whole body. My body, I bring my body in subjection to the Holy Spirit. Your body is a living sacrifice. Holy. Remember, Jesus said, be holy even as your Father in heaven is holy. Acceptable unto God, which is what? Your reasonable service. Amen. Uh, we want to please God. We want to be pleasing in our speech. Pleasing in our ways. Pleasing in the decisions we make. We want to walk circumspectly. Redeeming the time. Knowing the days are evil. Amen. The evilness is getting darker, but your light should get brighter. And then he said, and be not conformed. Amen. Don't let the devil change your mind. Don't let the green grass fool you. And be not conformed to this world, but be what? Transformed by the renewing. There's a renewal process. Once we become born again like babies, at first we're all milk. Then we learn to eat a little bit of meat. Then we, amen, we learn how to... Stop saying things that we don't need to say. Stop doing, amen, start walking in forgiveness, being disobedient. There's a lot of challenges. But the Holy Spirit, amen, remember that the Lord is the author and the finisher of our faith. And so the Holy Spirit, amen, is in you to conform you. 
amen, to the image of God's dear son. So by the renewing of your mind, that you might prove that what is that good? What is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God? So saints to the most high, I thank God for you. I love you. Thank God. Um, Sarah had to go back to work, so she's so I'm all, kind of all alone today. Amen. But I want you to be encouraged. Consider what you've heard tonight, what was taught, and recognize that, yes, there's a warfare. Uh, there's all kinds of philosophies, all kinds of mindsets, ideologies that want to pull you away from the simplicity of the gospel. But he that begun a good work in you, remember, he's faithful to perform it. And he will keep that which you commit unto him against that day. We have an announcement. Amen. Coming up, we have our Women of Significance Conference 2023. Lady Aura McGain of St. Emmanuel Church of God in Christ is our keynote speaker. We also have Prophetess Vanilla. Uh, um, Vanessa Wilder that will be ministering on evangelism and outreach in this in this time. Amen. I want you to come and be with special uh, uh, special musical guests. Amen. That is Saturday, July 15th at 2.30 at Agape. Write that down. Amen. Saturday, July 15th at 2.30 at Agape, which is 4716 West Lisbon Avenue. Amen. Um, I would say, yeah, two, get there between 2.30, 2.15 and 2.30. Uh, also, the next day we're going to be, amen, at Praise Missionary uh, uh, Temple, uh, Baptist Church, rather, Bishop Duckworth and Lady Renee, amen, they're having their women's conference on that Sunday at 3 o'clock, and moi, I'm a keynote speaker for that, and want to invite you to come to that. That's the next day, that's Sunday, July 16th. The Women of Significance is the 15th, the Saturday before. We'll also be um, having, uh, of course, Agape. We're getting ready to celebrate and congratulate our, our graduates for uh, the August 2023 class of commencement. And then we'll be over there at Rock Hill Missionary Baptist Church on August the 13th. And then coming up Sunday, or rather the Saturday the 30th, we'll have our Aspire Women's Self-Care Seminar with none other than Dr. Uh, Bessie Levy, amen, and some other great people that's going to be joining us. If you call us or write us, we will send you all of our calendar for the rest of this year, uh, but please contact us uh, by email or text, and we will give, be happy to send that out for you so that you can put it on your calendar. Well, I trust that you had a wonderful e evening, and have a blessed, blessed rest of your week, and know again that the joy of the Lord is your strength. Be blessed. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. God bless. Okay, I'm trying to. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm. I got the. Let me see. Well, I got it says close, but um, I'm trying to go to that. What red block? That heart shape. I'm just going to close it. I'm not doing something. I don't want to mess it up. 
I don't want to mess it up. I'm just going to close it. Well, you, you said, Sarah, you have to show me what the, it's not working. Be terrible at the end.
She's dying. The doctor says that there's no hope. And I want to stay. I beg you. forget about him. He won't forget. I'm not afraid of you. I'm afraid of death.
so it is when you have the first the solace part of the palace. Thank you, Miss. After the wedding, Kitty and I were living in Penn State. In the country? My parents here. So be it. As the Bible says, she will leave her father and mother, and the two will be one. Well, I, I really would like to give you my blessing and announce the engagement and the wedding. Oh, then, uh, if it were my choice, tomorrow. <laughs> oh, thank you, mon cher. That's nonsense. In that case, next week? <laughs> the boy must be mad. <laughs> Why not? Well, uh, the trousseau. Trousseau. Oh, yeah, exactly. We'll take care of it. Come on, my dear. We have to look for the uh, linen tablecloths first. First of all. You're trapped by Romeo. So, you don't mind a Christian wedding? feel guilty in relation to God. To man, women, yes, but, but not to God. If anything, he's guilty in relation to me. May I know why? My parents died when I was young. to marry the woman I've always loved. Chance. Don't try telling me that's God's work and that I should be grateful and so on and so forth. I would never dare. Marriage could be the most painful experience of your life. In fact, it will no doubt be just that. It means dying and being reborn in the flesh of another. Have you thought about She wants and what you want. Marriage is such an uncertain, uncomfortable, and dangerous journey that if God didn't accompany us, I would wish it on no one. surprise you if I admit that I hated you. Am I aware? When I received the telegram, I wish that I never die. They always told me to be strong. But 
seems like forgiving and loving or for the weak. It's nonsense. I've never felt as strong, supreme, confident, happy. You can make a public mockery of me. I shall never abandon her and I shall never utter a word of regret. It is my duty to be with her. I shall be. I think it would be wiser if you left now. If she wants to see you, I'll let you know.
Prince Alicia is away? Yes, Excellency. She's with Princess Verskaya. myself to my wife. You're a very surprising husband. How's my diet? Better, I think. Okay. It's my fault. I made her talk too much. I should go. See you soon, Emma. Excellency, let's stop. I don't want to hide anything from you. Betty told me that Kamfalski wishes to call on us before leaving for the front. I told her that I can't receive him. No. You said that the decision is your husband's to cannot receive him. And it has nothing to do with... I just don't want to. All right. Farewell, my darling. You don't have to repeat it. No need for a man to come and say goodbye to the woman he loves. Let's not talk about it. Well, they, they told me the wet nurse doesn't have enough milk. I asked a nurse. The doctors wouldn't allow me to. Now you've criticised me? I'm not criticising you. You're not criticising me, you are. Why should I decide? Forgive me, I'm oversensitive, I'm being unfair. Please, just, just go now. You can't go on like this. Is that what your book's about? If I was born here, I'm from here, and I'll never leave here. I'm a New York hotel. Yeah, I'm tall. 563 feet and 2 inches. I'm on top of the world. Just that we've been away. 
way home today and I've done this. If I'm away whole way, what will you do? Demolish the house? I just wanted to surprise you. Of course, indeed. It's quite a surprise. Sorry. You see, this is my home. I grew up here. Shall I have everything put up the way it was? I heard that friend of yours was seeking a divorce. That's good, isn't it? Yeah. I know. I can't live with them anymore. I don't love them. I've never loved them. I can't stop being near them anymore. His face, his hands, make me sick. I can't do it. Don't say that. He's forgiven me. He's a good man. What did I know? I wasn't even 20. But she said, he's a good man. We'll provide for you and your brother. And here I am. The prisoner of his kindness. Because he's forgiven me. He's now the ruler of my life. Say that I think you married without love. That was a mistake. But now the question is do you wish to carry on living with your husband? Does he wish that? I've no idea. You've just told me you can't bear him anymore. You want to take that back? I don't know. I don't know. tormenting yourself. He's tormenting himself. What's the sense of it? Perhaps a divorce could sort of end it. I told you Do you mean that? I'm here to talk to you about my sister and your situation. That's all I can think about. I've decided to forget to begin a new life, but that's impossible. Now I would just like to know what Emma wants. Go along with that. I'm afraid she herself may not know. What's to be done then? Well, uh, you will need to decide how to put an end to this state of affairs. Yes. A divorce. Yes. What other alternatives are? Deep down, it's simple. Simple. Do you think it's simple to decide what to do with myself? To me, it's a 
to go. To Anna, as a remnant of the former marriage? Are they gonna take care of you? To me? That was him for Anthony. The most you always did was he wouldn't come. I'll be responsible for you. Listen. You're agitated now. It's all right. I'm sorry? I'll agree to a divorce. I'll assume my share of the guilt. My death and I'll be able to pay back. And... And say it. I don't want to use it against her anymore. I... And I can take him with her. Look at the state. The pistol shot that could have killed you saved you from that insane passion. It's certainly a good thing for Russia. You just can't win brave officers like you. Thank you, Colonel. Countess? General? 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 You don't remember, but you did it before. It's still... Oh, Lord.